Hi, and welcome to Chess Base Workshop. I'm Steve Lopez. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate you being here. Um, we're going to look at a new feature of Chess Base 11 today, and I would love to show this to you live. It's an online feature. It requires an internet connection to make the magic work. However, as I've explained in previous videos, probably over explained it, this computer I'm working on right now is my laptop and I don't connect it to the internet and the reason I don't is because I make videos on it. I've tried to make videos on my other computers, I have several that are connected to the internet and the video quality always stinks. It always winds up being choppy, the audio cuts in and out, bad things happen. So I have one computer that I keep off the internet on purpose so I can do videos on it. Okay, So that's why you're not going to see this live. Um, I can't do a narrated video on a computer, at least on the equipment that I have, on the while I'm on the internet because of not only the fact that it's online, but the things like the antivirus and firewall and all the things that have to run in the background degrade the video performance. But this is a really cool feature. I'm going to do the next best thing. I'm going to show you the before and after of how this works. What this does, first of all, let me show you the game that we're going to work with. Let me double click on it down here. A uh, game I just pulled up at random from a database played in May of 2008 uh, in the Argentinian Championship. Not a terribly significant game. I said I just pulled it up at random. But I'm going to show you this feature. What it does is it goes on, goes out on the internet, goes to a server uh, where Chessbase has this massive database of games, and it will tell you what the novelty is in a particular game. Now the way you get to this feature, first of all, you've got your game loaded. You go up here to the Report menu. And the very left hand button, there's this little light bulb, it's called Novelty Annotation. Find the theoretical novelty and annotate with similar games, is what it does. Um, this is what the little uh, little mouse over pop up tells you. And what you would do is, you know, if this computer was online, I would click this button. What you wind up with after you click this button is this. And what it does, it's added a couple of annotations to the game. It's auto-annotated the game. It's done a couple, three things. First of all, if we had done this online, it would jump immediately to the position prior to the novelty. What you see right here is it has taken one move of the game and is called it a novelty. It's got the N over here in the notation. Follow my mouse over here where I'm moving it around. Uh, 14 bishop g3 has an n next to it. It's a novelty. It's a move that has not been played before. Now what this doesn't do, by the way, you have all these players who just ate up with the idea of finding theoretical novelties. Well, every game has a novelty in it somewhere, otherwise we'd all be playing the same game all the time. Um, is the novelty good or bad? Well, time will tell. You know, this does not judge. This, this feature does not say this was a good novelty or a bad novelty. It's a novelty. It's just something that hasn't been played. It's novel. It's new. That's what novelty means. But it doesn't give you any kind of a any kind of guidance as to whether this is a good novelty that busts this opening wide open or it's just a, a bad move that somebody played. What it does do, though, is it points out the point of departure, the place in the game where one of the players went away from known theory and played something else. The other thing that it does not do is it does not place the game in historical context. And what I mean by that is this. You'll notice something interesting here, which is this game was played in 2008. But you'll notice that the predecessor, of which there are six games, that's what that means here. There were six games in which Bishop takes G5 was played. This is, this is the novelty, by the way. Watch the board. Uh, Bishop G3 is what, uh, is what White played here. But the predecessor, which was played six times, was the Bishop captures instead. But it says predecessor, but notice that the game citation is for a game that was played the following year. What this does not do is it does not go back and look for games prior to 2008 when it pulls up predecessor games. It just means that this is uh, at, at this point in the game, at King F8, what's normally been played here six times, I'm sure there are other moves as well, but the one that's been played the most is Bishop takes G5. So it's showing you this is what's normally played in this position, 
but in your game this is the novelty this is the move that's different this is where white went into uncharted territory with this move so you could actually go back and pull up a game from let's say uh, the 1920s and run this feature on it and it's going to show you predecessor games from the last couple of years it doesn't do it in a historical context it just shows you one player has departed and gone someplace different um, relevant just what that means is it just looks for the main line the what's normally played uh, the, the path that, that strong players take in a particular position. So once the game goes to uh, knight f3, what typically gets played here by grandmasters is c6. And what it will do is it will give you a complete game citation. And I do mean complete. After relevant, it will give you the whole game. You can just play through the whole Megillah, move by move by move. And when you get to the end, it gives you the names of the players. It gives you their ratings. It gives you the tournament, the year, and if it came out of a chess-based publication, that's in there as well. This game can be found in chess-based magazine number 129 and gives you the result that white won. Um, the relevant annotation that gets put in here every time I've run it has been a grandmaster game. It's been a game where players 2,500 and up are the, the participants in the game. So what it's looking to show you here is relevant the relevant annotation is grandmaster play. After knight f3, this is where the top dogs go, uh, and they play this particular line. However, in this particular game, one of the players played something that you know is is has been played before, just uh, not something that top players normally normally go to or don't go to often. And as you go through the moves, then you get down to as I said, the novelty, the novel move that's not been played before, and then you get the predecessor annotation which is six times before someone has gone here so in this position bishop takes g5 is the normal move as to whether bishop g3 is a good move or not as i said this feature does not judge it just shows you where the novelty is and time will tell whether this is a, a good move or not as it's tackled more and more often in uh, in tournament play so that's what this does when you're in a game you just go to the report uh, menu and click on novelty annotation and it takes an un or even an annotated game it doesn't matter but it takes a game it goes on to uh, the, the chess based server where there are literally millions of games and more added every day that's what makes this different you had the ability to do this in previous versions of chess base where it would go into your master database um, on your hard drive whatever you had as your reference database and pull up uh, some relevant games. This one goes out and does it on the internet. So this database that it's going to is kept up to the minute. If a top tournament is played yesterday, you can get that information. If it's if it's relevant to this game you're looking at, it will come up in in this feature of novelty annotation. So it's just another way to get information faster and faster in our uh, digital age. You can go out on the internet and get instant relevant annotation. In this particular case, this particular game, nothing terribly recent is uh, is relevant to this particular game. You'll notice that the two games referenced are from 2009. Um, but the cool part is that if something got played yesterday that is relevant to this game, it would be pulled up in this annotation. It's really a cool feature. And uh, I'm just sorry I can't show it to you live. The question is, how long does it take? I know that's burning on your lips. Um, it really depends on internet traffic. The longest I've seen this take is about 30 seconds. Normally, if you don't have tons and tons of people online hitting on the chess based server all at once, um, this happens dang near instantaneously. When you click on this button, novelty annotation, you will get a little pop up in the middle of the screen it tells you it's connecting to the server and depending on server traffic that just depends on how long that pop-up will stay there as soon as that pop-up disappears bang you get your information I've seen it mostly happen dang near instantaneously uh, within five seconds or less 15 seconds uh, is would, would even not be out of the question between five and 15 seconds a long wait for this in my experience has been 30 seconds uh, if you can't wait 30 seconds for this, then, man, you're just living too fast. You know, there was a time I remember in my lifetime when you wanted to find a novelty, you had to hit the books, and it took you hours. Now you can do it in seconds uh, with the uh, chess base and an Internet connection. So times they are changing. So I just want to show that feature to you, one of the cool new features of chess base 11. We'll look at some more next time around. Till then, have fun.